All right, welcome back to the vlog and podcast. And I'm really excited about this episode today. We've got a song that really, I love this song. I love exactly 93.75% of this song. But that 93.75% of it is amazing. Um, super ministerial. Lots of great truth in this beautiful song. The song that I want to talk about is the song, When I Survey. Uh, the official title is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, uh, written by Isaac Watts in and published in 1707. Um, the version that I listened to is by Chelsea Moon, and uh, I we'll have the link in the description. I love this song, most of it. There is one lyric that's a little bit problematic for me, and that's why I said I like 93.75% of the song. That's 6.25% or one line out of the 16 lines. That's the one line I don't like. And I'll tell you why in a bit. But before I get to the song, what do we do with that? What do we do with songs with content that's uh, not necessarily ungodly? Well, maybe it is ungodly. But with problematic lyrics, you've got songs that are popular, famous, Maybe helpful to a lot of people. Maybe most of the song is helpful. And then there's parts of it that are like, yung, yung sa Tagalog may sabit. Let me give a few examples, right? One of those is the song Reckless Love by Corey Asbury. The chorus goes, Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. It chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Nice song. Nasana. But people have taken issue with that word reckless, right? And you look at the synonym of reckless, like heedless, careless, dangerous. Is that how God is? And Corey Asbury actually had a response to that where he said, when I use the phrase, the reckless love of God, when we say it, we're not saying that God himself is reckless. He's not crazy. We are. We are, however, saying the way he loves in many regards quite so. What I mean is this. He's utterly unconcerned with the consequences of his own actions with regard to his own safety, comfort, and well-being. He doesn't matter what he'll gain or lose by putting himself on the line. He simply puts himself out there and on the off chance that you and I might look back at him and give him that love in return. His love leaves the 99 to find the one... Uh, every time, and to many practical adults, that's a foolish concept. Well, what if he loses the 99 in finding the right one, right? What if finding that one lost sheep isn't always will be supremely important? So I have a couple of links there. Two different positions on this. One is a vlogger who I like to follow, a pastor as well, Mike Winger, who said he doesn't endorse the song because it just doesn't mean reckless. Another one that you can read is a blog by John Piper, who... Parang he's a little more okay with it. Where he says, it reckless is not describing God. It just looks that way to people. I'm not going to make a decision. We don't sing it at the church I lead. I don't have a problem though if someone wants to, to sing it. I would ask though, do you know that God's not reckless? Do you know that he is not careless? That he is not like, you know foolishly chasing after us. God is not foolish. God is full of wisdom. It might seem reckless. If that's, if that's what you're saying, then that's, that's more acceptable. So I like the way Mike Winger said it, though. Even though he doesn't endorse the song, he said he can understand why it resonated with people because it said an old truth in a new way. The question we need to ask ourselves is, is the new way worth it? Another song that likes that's like this is the song How He Loves Us by John Mark McMillan, which was popularized by David Crowder, right? And one of the lines is actually the bridge, the, 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 the climax of the song is, we are his portion and he is our prize, drawn to redemption by grace in his eyes. If grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. I know you want to sing it. I do too. And then here's the part. When heaven meets earth, and the original says, when heaven meets earth like a sloppy wet kiss, there David Crowder replaced it with an unforeseen kiss. And then my heart turns violently inside of my chest. I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way he loves us, oh, he loves us, oh, he loves us. And that became an issue for some people, where some people were like, oh, sloppy wet kiss, you know? 
<laughs> How could that be a worship song? What is that supposed to mean? Sloppy wet kiss. And uh, John Mark McMillan, I'll, I'll put the vlog in the show notes, he comments on it and he says, I can't believe I have to answer this. You know, and basically he's saying it's an innocent kiss. It's like the kind of super wet, saliva-filled kiss that a kid would give their parent, like a daughter would give her father. And so it's a very sweet, intimate moment. So for people to take this song and turn it into something else, it's like, what's wrong with you guys? That's not what I meant. On the other hand, David Crowder has this video where he's explaining why he changed it where he wasn't comfortable with saying the words sloppy wet kiss and, and just the imagery of that and the potential for, I would need to explain myself with that. And that goes back to lyrics, right? Like why, why are we saying what we're saying and is the creativity worth it? And this is not just true with worship songs, but it's true with sermon illustrations, with sermon styles, with social media posts by Christians, where Okay, in an effort to be creative, are we actually being still being clear? Because the goal is to communicate a specific message. Again, I'm not going to come down on any one person who says that, but it's your call. Do you know what, what that song really means though, or what that, those words mean? Do you know? And if it bothers you, then don't sing it. It's that simple. If you don't like it, don't sing it. Let me give a third example before I go to my actual song. And that song is, what a beautiful name it is. And one of the verses there goes, You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What can separate us now? And uh, again, this is another song where some people said, How could you take it that way? You know, all it meant is Jesus wanted us in heaven. He didn't want us outside of heaven, so he brought heaven to us. Yes, that's true. But the other way to take it the same word is you didn't want heaven without us is heaven's not a happy place. The presence of the Father and the Spirit and the angels are not a happy place. So it's like, oh, what a lame party. Let's make sure we bring some humans in here and die for their sins so they can make heaven a better place. That's not the point, though. The implication to some people is that God's not happy in heaven. And the truth is, heaven will still continue, even if we don't repent. Hell and people who choose to reject God cannot hold heaven hostage. Now, God loves us. And he found the way there's other, you know, there's a, a blog, a link as well by John Piper, where some people propose a different lyric for this part. So, again... I, I like that song. What a wonderful name it is. Beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. I love most of that song. And for me, every time that we get to that part, I either just don't sing that line or I just think to myself, this just means he wanted me to be in heaven. That's it. You can Google it. People have alternate lyrics of their own. My point is, words matter. Words matter, especially words in worship songs. And the reason why I, I, I notice them, and I, I really think you should as well, I think people should be thinking about them, is I want to be able to sing a song freely. I want to be able to go all out. I want to be able to, like, you know, belt, you know, in the shower, if you will. I don't want to have to think about tama ba to, tama ba yan, mali yan, or this, I mean it this way, not that way. That's why I'm using this segment and this vlog and this podcast to promote songs that I like because... These are great songs. When I Survey, the main song, well, it's a long 10-minute introduction. When I Survey is an amazing song. There's just one part about it I don't like, and I'm going to point it out. The lyrics go, When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. And the idea is the more I look at the cross, the more I look at Jesus, and not physically look at it because I'm not there, but the more I meditate on it by reading the scripture and thinking about what he did and even other worship songs that tell me about what he did, like Amazing Grace. Or I hear sermons about the beauty of the cross, which is what every Sunday should be. Where it's just bringing us back. The more I, I meditate on the beauty of Jesus, my richest gain I count but loss. I realize that's, that's beautiful. That's worth having. That's amazing. That's what's truly precious in the world. And whatever gain 
financial gain, promotional gain, social media gain. Yeah, that, that's, not, that's not as important. This, this cross is so important. And then the line goes, I pour contempt on my pride. And I remember this song because I, was, I think my wife and I were fighting and I just started listening to this song out of the blue. So Spotify recommendation. And I just realized, you know what? This fight is not that important. It doesn't matter who's right, who's wrong. What matters is Jesus died for me. I have no issues. I have no case to make. I have nothing I'm fighting for. Thank you, Jesus. Second verse goes, Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast. Save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. And it's continuing along those lines, right? Like, Lord, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get caught up with ugly things. I don't want to trade valuable things, the most valuable thing, which is what you did for me, for something that's garbage. But this is also the verse with the line I don't like. And I don't completely hate it, but I, I'm bothered by that last line. I sacrifice them to his blood. I don't know. I don't, I don't see that. And it, please, theologians, help me. I've tried to do research on this. I couldn't find any comments on this. But I don't see anywhere in Scripture where we're told to sacrifice to the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the sacrifice for me. So, I, I, you know, I get it. You're rhyming God with blood. But, yeah, I, I don't see that. I'm not supposed to sacrifice to His blood. I thought about, like, what would you say? I sacrifice them for his blood? But no, it's free, Deva. Right? So, I don't know. That's the only part I have a question with. Moving on. The next verse, C. So, she's surveying the cross. The singer is saying, I'm surveying the cross. I'm looking at the cross. What do they see? See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did ever such love and sorrow meet or thorns compose so rich a crown? Just beautiful, that part, that love and sorrow combining at the cross. How much love did he have for us? How much sorrow was there in being separated from the Father? And yet that sorrow, it says it's mingled. You know, that sorrow just tells me how much he loves me. Because if it costs you that much and it pains you that much, but you would do that for me. You know, that what else... Is worth having, believing for, fighting for, other than that. Which leads me to the last verse, which is the response. Where the response is, were the whole realm of nature mine. If I owned everything, if I owned all the minerals and energy sources and, and plants and, and, and most beautiful natural wonder, if I owned all of that, that were an offering far too small. That would be an offering to God that's too small to give. Even if I gave him the whole world, that would be too small. Why is it too small? Because love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. I love that line because if I look at the love of God, and I see how much He loves me and how much He gave to love me. There is no just being friendly with that. There's no friend zoning that love. This is an intense, passionate, dedicated love. It's like when, when I was pursuing my wife and she could feel that I was pulling out all the stops and I was going all out to be with her and you know giving her not a lot of gifts not a lot of expensive gifts you'll see later why but just do, showing her this much attention she took it on herself she, she realized look this guy is being serious i've got to give him a serious response you know it's only like people with no character with bad character like whether it's women who are gold diggers or men who are used to just receiving gifts, expensive gifts from other people without asking, wait, what's this about? You're, you can't give me 
something this expensive without wanting something in return. What's going on here? In the same way, this, this line is saying, when I look at the cross and I see the love and sorrow mingled down, I see how much love is pouring out on me, this kind of love demands my soul, my life, my all. And he's saying, I can't buy off that kind of love. That would be like the, the gold digger of the worst kind, right? To receive like branded bags and digital items, you know, and then like gadgets and to like, ah, I don't really care about him. No, no, no. If it's a lot, if the gift is that precious, you realize, oh gosh, I, what does this entail? What do I give back? And the sickner realizes it's not even a thing. It's not even the whole realm of nature. It's not even material things. This kind of love means I either love the, the person back or not. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. That is the picture of someone. who, When you look at the cross of Jesus, you realize, wow, I either love him or, or reject him, really. I value what he did. And if I really value what he did, then my life, my soul, my all. That's why in the beginning, my richest gain I count but loss. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast in anything else because I've found the thing that's truly, truly precious to me. So that's the song. When I survey, go have a listen to it. The link will be in the description by Chelsea Moon. And Uncle Daddy, I think, is the name of the band. So, yeah, I love this song. And yeah, let me know what you think about it. I hope this was helpful for you. If you want to continue the discussion and conversation, join us in the Telegram group. The link is in, in the description and on the screen if it's, a, if it's a video you're watching. Also, if you, some of you have said, expressed interest and support, that would be really helpful because I'm, I'm just paying for this for my own pocket we do have this uh link uh, it's in the description but we'll add to it along the way because some people have said they've had problems with that link if this video helped you don't forget to like and subscribe it helps us reach other people to whom this would be relevant to so thanks for that